Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show. It covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Ooh, don't lick me, Pedro. <laughs> this week... Show title! God damn it. Um, <laughs> Linux support for Rust. That's right, it has been discontinued, and we're going to pretend to care. And we've kind of updated our web zone using the latest in DHTML uh, technology. Steam OS is getting the 3.0. Valve is certainly known for running like clockwork. Wait, what? And Smock Zero gets ported. No, wait, no, it's that other one Linux handheld project that, you know, produces tangible stuff. Steam merges the chat update with a stable client and is met with scathing mainstream articles. And Linus did a thing with Linux. No, no the Canadian one. How can you tell them apart? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, piloting the SSOMG. It's on fire here in Athens, joined every week by the man up north in Toronto, one Jordan Sving. He I, gotta, I gotta eject the warp core, man. It's on fire. That is a <laughs> euphemism, ladies and gentlemen. And on the Isle of Britannia, one Pedro Matthias. Um, he does horrible things and it's terrifying, but along with your help and Shadowrealm Dynamic, that's right, we form. Nailed it, Mike. Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to uh, see what's going on in each other's life organs. Uh, Pedro, what's up, man? I heard you get like a new new sex toy. Well, it's shaped like one, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 a Dremel. It's yeah, it looks a no, lot like his vaporizer. It we were talking about exactly pre super shows. Uh, yeah, I'd see. Uh, I could see the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the resemblance but yeah no i'm tomorrow i'm going to be uh drilling holes I'm serious in, uh, man leave it leave things. it on your desk plugged in through the show let's just let's let's just see i i wanted to go like right through your upper palate now <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's like russian roulette except you know on film hmm. no <laughs> all right a boy can dream jordan what's up I got oh well, uh, spe- speaking of ultron i actually started watching the uh the the netflix ultron series it's pretty good um, but now I'm, I'm getting ready. I got a week of Amazon training coming up, so I'm, I'm prepared for that. If you're going to be so smart at the end of the day, you're going to know how to order stuff on Amazon and, uh, Oh no, may, may, maybe I'll learn to finally use our affiliate link for buying stuff. <laughs> there we go. That'll be one of us for once. Um, over here, I haven't done a whole lot. I like learned stuff about SQL and that it's smarter than I am. But I, I think we've come to a mutual understanding. But more about that in the news segment, because we need to get into what the horse is up to. Um, it's it's not in a horse anymore. What 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 what's what's the what what is the animal avatar of Discord? I don't, I, don't, I don't know, like some kind of platypus or like one one, one of those monkeys that just howls horribly in pain. <laughs> it's the steam. Yes. So uh, the first one, the big one, is uh, Steam merging all of the uh, beta, all of the betas up until now to the stable client. And well, chances are, if you've been following along, you already know what it does. And if you're a Linux user, just use the beta client. It's fine most of the dude, time. Dude, dude, uh, Corey <laughs> Pokemon Tournament DX Pro Yellow Swag Switch Controller. Yep. Uh, that actually but, uh, exists and it makes me hate humanity even more <laughs> no hori is a uh, like a pretty big uh producer of controllers and they get a, they see a lot of use in like the uh fighting uh yeah they, they, they make all they make a lot of fight stick parts like the the, yeah. the buttons and the, and the joysticks are usually hori those are known to be relatively good quality stuff but, um, yeah, yeah but specifically this update uh brings the uh it does bring if you have been running the stable client it does bring some new stuff for linux uh you can now have uh icons on your linux games that the developer didn't set up the icon correctly so it just imports the windows icon uh there they fixed an issue where the system would become temporarily unresponsive after you've hit exit steam uh they updated the runtime yeah, uh, they fixed a problem where the screensaver would always be disabled if C was running, which I liked. That was a bit of behavior that I very much enjoyed. And of course, it brings the whole new chat thing. 
for the three people that I, care I can't believe this. it's not Discord. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I had to revert back uh, a while ago because the beta was causing some issues launching games. That's why you don't always stay on the beta because sometimes <laughs> shit gets a little breaky, especially if you're using Steam input. Um, but yeah, the now now it's back. It's it's weird looking, and I I like I hate change, so I automatically prefer the old one. One, I'm kind of terrified by the Australian spelling of squirrel. That bothers me too. Um, another thing they've thrown in here is the option for GL rendering for your browser, and you can disable it, so that should tell you all you need to know about that. And they've still not added the option to zoom in text or the entire thing. It's a glorified fucking web browser in the first place. Let me do that because your high DPI mode sucks, and it, I don't uh, want to use it. It does. Uh, the same runtime is also getting updated to the latest version of SDL2, so all that new controller junk is being supported getting it through that. And uh, for, for Windows users, you can finally use that IBM keyboard of yours <laughs> that goes up to F24. Was it IBM? I think I think it was IBM that had those. And um, Sun. I got a Sun keyboard that's, I don't know if it's 24, but man, it's got a gang of them. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, up, up next, though, by, by the cricking of my thumb, something repository-based this way comes. So this is from the Steam forums. Links to all this stuff in our show notes, as usual. Uh, so someone was poking around on one of the Steam OS repository servers, and lo and behold, there seems to be a new uh, directory there for something called Clockwork, which we believe to be Steam OS 3.0. Um, you can go poke around that repository. Uh, they got um, they got the packages.gz there. Uh, if you want to take a look, this is just like a Debian repository. So, you know, it's, it's the purview of elite hack source, but we know that uh, steam 3.0 is coming. Um, we don't have a release date on this, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's ho- hopefully it's going to be a much needed update to you, the rather aging steam runtime libraries. You're, you're burying the lead. This, this proves that steam is capable of counting to three. <laughs> So you heard it here first. That also confirms that Half-Life 3 is Linux exclusive. Mm-hmm. Something like now, that. As much as I want SteamOS to be awesome, and I do, it's it's hard to stay positive uh, when it takes them so long to release stuff. And it's just incremental stuff, which, okay, that's fine. You need that sometimes. But how about them new features? Just, you know. Some new stuff. Well, That'd they, be nice. they, they, they did say that SteamOS is going to be their main avenue for when we deliver something cool on Linux, it's going to be through SteamOS. So maybe maybe once some more news starts coming out, we'll hear something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Crawl, crawl through that package list and see if like something is crazy. Like Half-Life 3.so.12 is being installed by default. Your LD library path or some shit. <laughs> so let's wrap this business up with uh, what the hell what does it, uh, they do anyway? <laughs> What, yes. do you, what do you even do? What, what do you even do? Uh, this is an article from How to Geek um, asking the uh, question, what does Valve do anymore besides take our money? I think you just answered your question there, Brad. Um, but he, go, he goes into a little bit of uh, background about how Valve hasn't released the game since freaking Dota 2. Artifact is coming out, but we don't know anything about that other than there's some lanes and Richard Garfield is designing it. And... There's a, there's a whole lack of oh lots of speculative VR stuff. Bas- basically, it boils down to this: Valve has wormed their way into a necessary corner of the internet. They've carved out their niche as the main storefront for games. On it's a pretty respect. big niche. <laughs> yeah, especially especially on Linux, you're, you're kind you kind of that's where you need to be distributing your games. So they they and they're they're taking their little cut and. It's it's like it's like cable TV. They don't need to do anything. They they're they're rent seeking, and that enables them to work on like lots of cool passion projects that we'll never fucking see. And of course, everyone's frustrated because oh, we want we want Half Life Three, we want Left for Dead Three. So, uh, maybe, here, this this is the reality. They, they they've found there's no money in making games anymore. The money is in giving games to the people and then taking your cut. And the thing uh, that this article uh, reminded me of was that uh, Steam broadcasting was once a thing that would have come to Linux at a later point, and I'd completely forgotten about. <laughs> All right, I like your fan fiction. Um, 
That is kind of a thing, though. When you brought that up, I was like, wait a minute. Steam Pro- is that even still in the thing? And there's that lone guy. It's like, I'm streaming. And- <laughs> With like two people watching. Yay! <laughs> now, admittedly, you know, streaming games was definitely a thing when this launched, but if they would have stuck with it, uh, they, they might have been able to have something, especially with they all of a sudden seem to be hellbent. It's like, we we can Discord too. It's like, no, no, Discord ate your lunch on that. Dis- mm-hmm. Discord's going to be distributing games before you're going to like get that community. That community is locked in. Um Speaking, speaking of distributing games, though, uh, the article does bring up an interesting point that Amazon is dipping their water, their toes into that water, which, I mean, Steam could use some competition, but do yeah. we really want Amazon controlling another aspect of things that we buy until everyone just buys everything from Amazon? Well, Amazon already owns Twitch. I mean, basically, the short and long of this article is uh, what everyone already knows is Valve's big, it's fat, it's happy. I'm not saying inherently there's nothing wrong with that, but you got to remember about other companies that were, you know, big, fat, and happy at one point in history, like AOL, IBM, MySpace, Atari, too big to fail. Right. That can happen. (laughs) So something that can also happen is uh, losing Linux support for your favorite uh, DayZ clone. I'm sorry, that's the sound of my rusty trombone. <laughs> oh man. Um our, our favorite favorite developer, Gary Newman, uh wrote a little message on Twitter. He says, Hey man, this is, was in reply to Iminyuxi. Yeah, that's what you get. Um we stopped selling Rust on Linux because we won't don't give it the QA support it needs. There are situations where there's a Unity Linux bug that pops up. And we ship with it because fuck you. That's right. I might have added that because it's the right decision for 99.99% of our players. Now we had this discussion. There, there's more to this story, Pedro. Mm-hmm. Now, if he would just landed that, I think I could have just said, all right, that's fair. Yeah, no, that would have been totally fair. Uh, in fact, the, the first two tweets that he made about this, totally fair it's that last one that last one in that thread is like also linux community being abusive demanding rude to the few developers actually shipping games on your favorite os isn't the way to go it makes me regret ever shipping linux versions yeah see when linux uh, users are being handled or being handed ship versions of a game that they paid the exact same amount for that everyone else did listen, they're not listen, going pa- to pedro, be too pa- happy pa- 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 pedro Pedro, th- this is 2014, and you should just be grateful that you're getting a Linux port. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. See, developers like uh, Gary Newman, when they can't, uh, you know, um, figure out how to click export, or that's all they can do, Listen, basically. Listen, all right, I'm going <laughs> to stop you again. In Gary's defense, the Windows and Mac, well, even the Windows version is, is horribly busted and buggy. It is, especially after this latest update, because they, you know, the one that caused them to decide to stop shipping the Linux version or selling the Linux version. Apparently, it's very, very buggy on Windows, too. But hey, if you can't figure out Baby's first game engine, I'm surprised it took you this long to admit defeat. I just got to say this, man, (laughs) is, you know, honestly, I tried to get angry about this. I just couldn't because, first of all, Thank you, Gary, for the free copies of Rust that you sent all yep. three of us yourself, not like somebody at Face Punch, but good on you, like way back when. Um, part of me, you know, just to be snarky, is <laughs> wanting to sit here going, you know what? Nothing of value is lost. You know, that can also be true. But it, it, I mean, it is. There's like 12 million other crafty survival games that are out there. There is, man. Tons. Uh, and, 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 here, and here, here, here's the thing, too, is considering like Gary's been bringing this up for what, when, when did, when did Rust launch on Steam? Like Anyways, 1436. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think the year of the Spanish Armada. Right. But con, con, considering a, like, however long he spent saying th- this exact spiel, oh, Linux users are abusive. It's co- cost too much money. We're not making any money off Linux. I'm surprised it really took him that long to finally nope it off. This mm-hmm. It did. Now, I mean, listen. Now, and, and if you already oh, okay. own the game, you're still getting support, but you can't, you can't buy it anymore. That's, Here's the thing. Yeah. I mean, it takes a big man big person to admit that they can't Linux in 2018. And I'm going to say, you know, Hey, so long. And thanks for all the caveman penises. I mean, that was fun. I enjoyed watching yeah, that. There were a lot of caveman penises on steam for a while there, <laughs> but 
I guess, you know, he does have a point, Gary. You do, you know, we should as a community, because we get to, we love heaping praise on good stuff and we do it mm-hmm. in spades because we get excited about that type of um, quality that we see. But we should continue like throwing that gratitude and love at the few hundred of good developers out there with like smaller budgets than Face Punch and that are turning out quality Linux ports. And yeah. I mean, those ports are sound as a pre Brexit pound, baby. And in the line, man, I, I again, I, I it sucks. It really sucks if you bought this game to play on Linux. And you, I think they're still going to let it work. You're just going to have to do your own server with whatever version. But mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, up next is uh, Star Ruler 2. It's not a new game, but the the, the company Blind Mind Studios kind of fell apart. And because it, it's it's been it's been a couple of years, they have decided, according to Gigi Lucas, that they're just going to dump the source code. Uh, so you can go to their GitHub page, uh, Blind Mind Studios. You can grab the source code, and you can build it yourself. And this this is a nice little thing to do, especially for like a company that has straight up abandoned their game. And I gotta give you, I gotta give these guys credit for not going like the natural selection foisting route. Like we decided to let our community steer and curate this because they're <laughs> the ones who really care about this game. Blah blah blah. We're totally gonna like take the money that we made and run off. Fuck you. Go maintain your own game. Hey man, multiplayer and, and, is still and, compatible. That's good. Is, it is okay. That, that that was that was the the other question I had because uh, sometimes there's some issues with uh, Steam multiplayer not working well with like the default multiplayer in a lot of games. So it's it's good to see that uh, if you want to put in the effort, you can get this for free. Get it up and running. Uh, yeah, thoughts. Well, I mean, you still need the assets, though, right? Uh, do you? So. Um, no pre-built binaries does mean anyone can play the game for free, but you'll need to put an extra effort. So I think they're actually. They actually included all the assets. Okay, well, they said that yeah. the music wasn't free on their GitHub page. That's what I'm saying. Mm, yeah. Ah. I think if you oh, want background maybe, noise. Yeah, mm-hmm. they just cut off the music, yeah. Mm. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world. You can make your own soundtrack. Pew, pew. Oh, hashtag yeah. Slayer. Yeah, that's the thing, though. It's not a pew, pew game. It's a spreadsheet simulator. And, okay, don't get me wrong. I like games with stats and numbers and stuff. I do. Uh, but it, it comes a point where it's just too much. And you know, kudos to the devs. I'm definitely curious to see what the uh, the community is going to do with it. If anything, please do something. Uh, it's just that, yeah, no, it's just not my uh, my cup of tea. Hey, at the end of the day, I definitely got to say, absolutely good on the developers, simply because it is so nice to see this approach. Other than nine years from now, uh, somebody fresh into university decides they're going to reverse engineer an engine. So, mm-hmm. where's Open Skyrim? <laughs> and, and and again for even just for like people who want to hack around with games hey here's here's something here's a base go go nuts with it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. indeed uh good uses for steam we found one mm-hmm. yeah uh, uh well, let's uh, uh put out well, this is enough. what happens when nobody picks a story <laughs> in the show notes i just wanted to see which one of them would take it was not 1.14.4 is now available uh if you have it on steam just download it it's uh the update's been pushed out. Uh, they've made some changes. Uh, you can read all about it. They've made a pretty comprehensive forum post, uh, with including a security vulnerability that they found with the game client that was able to execute arbitrary malicious code uh, if you were playing it on Windows. Also, if you were playing it on Windows, and uh, excuse me while I just rip Windows a new one, uh, if you were using OneDrive to sync your game files, uh, well, uh, there's still a known uh, issue with version 1.14 in that uh, OneDrive will fuck with your game files and will not let you play the game properly. So just uh, keep that in mind. Good thing they did, uh, even though it was a significant enough uh, update. The multiplayer is still working if you have version 1.13.2 or later. So even if you are on a slightly older version, you can still play with the new one. So that's cool. <laughs> I got to say, I mean, if you're running this on Windows and using OneDrive, you deserve what you get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's, good, it's good that like an open source game like this, that when, the, when they're building against an unsecure version of something, in this case, it was Lua. 
uh, that they're they're willing to push out um, an update very very quickly. And the other good thing is that you know if you had this game on Steam, you got that out of the box yep. because. That, that 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 is something that a lot of open source games suffer from. Well, I guess not so much if you're installing them from your OS's like distribution or your OS's repository. Even if you're because installing you them from GOG, man. Yep. Yep. <laughs> or Humble downloads. Or hum- can you can you actually download Wesnoff from Humble? I don't know if they're. I'm just saying as an example. I'm not saying this game in particular. I'm talking about ah. anytime you don't have. You know that's why the GOG Galaxy client would be very helpful. So you're not playing something that's horribly out of date, possibly insecure. And I really, really wish Valve, Gabe, call me. Um, they would just give established open source games a, a free pass so they could get their business if they wanted to. Because mm-hmm. I know some people are like, Storm Zero, and I'm not using that. Which well, and that- I completely understand and respect. I mean, and that's the other thing is we need a good we need a good floss or GPL compatible library. Just to hook into the Steam multiplayer sauce, because that would when, 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 when Super Tux Cart finally decides to get the, make, push that online multiplayer to prod, hey, you can just... Ben Stone is playing Super Tux Cart. I'm going to join him. Yeah. All right. Playing Super Tux Cart now. Whee! Look at this imaginary bullshit universe we live Whee! in where Super Tux Cart has online multiplayer. Shut up. Uh, permanent price drops. Let's talk about that. Indeed. So Alien Arena. I'm talking about, uh, you know, old games on Linux. Well, uh, Quake 3 um, fast-paced first-person shooters uh, have been dime a dozen on Linux, and Alien Arena was one of the ones that uh, kind of branched out and eventually landed on Steam. And, well, they have dropped the price. They've dropped the price so much that uh, someone even went to their forums just like, uh, the price just dropped to one ninety nine without indication that this counts. It was wicked expensive, though, was it? Was it no, like it was like... Uh, or something? Yeah, it, it wasn't. I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't like crazy expensive, but it was a significant enough drop that uh, yes, even the developer said this. That is a permanent. Uh, that is permanent for this iteration of the game. The price change that is. So yeah, now you can get uh, Alien Arena for two dollar or uh, one pound sixty nine giggity. <laughs> Or or, or two dollars and twenty nine cents Canadian. I mean, that, 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 that's one way to get people to check out your shooter on Linux in twenty eighteen. It's like it's back. Go, oh, you can buy a coke for that much if you yeah. enjoy it. Have well, fun. Two thousand percent on that, simply because uh, it's. I, I like this game way back in the day. Yeah. All right. I'm, let's be honest. A buck for a Quake Three, something based off Quake Three and a shooter in twenty eighteen. That's still a hard sell, but I mean. Kicking some money. You're helping out development. Mm-hmm. And uh, this game reminds me of Mars Attack, a criminally underrated movie. <laughs> Hashtag ack, 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 bitches. We come in peace. Mm-hmm. Do not run. We are your friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Let's let's make some epic games, you guys, with Epic Game Maker Sandbox Platformer. Uh, you can pick it up for, oh, wow, it's on sale for 71 cents Canadian. Hot damn. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, that's, like a, that's like a penny US. I don't, I don't even know. So this, it, it's sort of like an like action cents. platformer Mario Maker style game where you can go make some levels, challenge your friends. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can upload... Uh, it has a nice interface in fantasy 2D graphics. It, it basically looks like a, like a cheap ripoff of um, the NES Legend of Zelda. But I mean, hey, if you like making troll levels and subjecting your friends to horrible, horrible stuff, this might be for you. And hey, for, we could review like, it next week. We'll just pick up three copies and we each create a level for the others to beat. And we, we time it. <laughs> Because I can draw a lot of penises in that space. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if it's going to be like Mario Maker, where like, oh, you actually have to beat the level to actually share it. Probably. It makes sense. If you're putting out a game like this, you need to put that caveat in. Hey, Otherwise, Pedro, people are just going to be If you're charging dicks. 71 cents for it, I'm not sure that's actually true. If you're paying $100 to put your game up on Steam, yeah. You know what? <laughs> I have evidence against that coming up. Uh, oh, yeah. There yeah. is that. <laughs> but before we get to that, we do need to talk about perhaps the biggest uh, release uh, when it comes to games this week, which is Guts and Glory. Uh, if you are a person who watches Let's Players on YouTube, you probably know about this game because 
this has been all over the fucking place. Uh, it's uh, yeah, no, it's um, it's available now. It costs uh, eleven pounds thirty nine over here uh, in uh, the UKs, and it runs. I got the uh, I played it while it was still in early access. It was in some bundle. I can't remember which one exactly, but yeah, it, it ran pretty well, and it's actually surprising the amount of content that this game has for what is basically a fuck around simulator what with an actual know? game. It's it's like if Goat Simulator had an actual game behind a it child instead of just wagon, being a fuck around simulator. Well, I I, I mean, so th- this is very very similar to another game that was popular with the, with the streamers a couple of years ago called Happy Wheels. Yes. Where, where uh, yeah, it, it was basically this, but in 2D. So, I mean, it might be fun to stream. That might be that might be a thing to do. Just watch Sandy and I bike, ride a bike with <laughs> Oculus Rifts on our faces <laughs> and get hit by cars. <laughs> and, and then we'll actually go play some video games. I, maybe, I, maybe this one I would pay all the money in the world for that. So, uh, you know, in Breaking Bad, Walter White uh, had a fugue state. And apparently, <laughs> during that time... Motherfucker made a game, got it published on Steam. Is the only thing I can think. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to point this out because you're looking at the page. There's no video and all that. This, this is it. What I'm showing you, hundred percent, and it's available as soon as you look away. Explore a haunted dreamscape inspired by the likes of <clears throat> and strawberry cubes or something like that. So, riddle me this, Batman. Did someone just burn a hundred watt stinky caches on a joke? Because it runs on almost anything. See, I'd say I, I, that someone spent a hundred bucks to call Valve out on that trolling clause. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, they could actually make a game out of this. Is it a troll or is it avant-garde shit not obeying the Steam Store guidelines? That, you that, you that, decide. My, my brain meets is having that problem. I was like, troll or artsy bullshit? It's it's uh, like it's like stitches, right? You 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 don't know. <laughs> you can't tell, man. It's it, this... it's pose law. It, it's looped back around, and it's indistinguishable from the thing that it's actually parodying. Yeah, this really does scream. Hey, Valve, you have that trolling clause now for games. Well, here's a troll. Figure out, motherfuckers. I, you know this was valuable. Now that I know that you can write fuck all anything in the available <laughs> section. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> available yesterday. Mm, right three <laughs> seconds into the future you buy right. it now and you close the time loop <laughs> <laughs> okay. well i mean we're, we're 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 gonna we're gonna keep on leaping until we finally make the the leap home <laughs> but until Shut then up, scott bacula canadian never. ripoff scott bacula <laughs> on a budget canadian scott bacula ripoff that's a show title um yes. uh, com- coming up next ben tells you about our website and the joys of writing sequel queries Over here at Linux Gamecast, we often suffer from the uh, syndrome of subjective doubles. If you don't know what that is, Google it. But uh, this week, someone decided to be really awesome and uh, really flattering and use my name. Hang on a minute. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, subjective I, doubles, did you have to Google that? I got... I just googled doppelganger syndrome, and that was the actual technical term. All right, so. I didn't well, yeah. well, listen. So, so I didn't Pedro, want people. Pedro, I have a question for you. Right. What's the technical term for doppelbanger syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> you can find cutting edge, groundbreaking humor like this by heading on over to <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com, clicking that support the show button. And I don't know, clicking on another one of the links and entering your credit card numbers. We got all sorts of shit you can click on. It's it's good stuff. Sorry, um, I was we, busy suggesting a show title. Um, yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you can you can. We got uh, Libra Pay links, Amazon affiliate links, Duo affiliate links, all that stuff. Also, check out patreoncom slash Gamecast where we post all our cool stuff. Um, it's what's funding the other four days of streaming we do a week. Um, it's good stuff. You get access to stuff like our Discord channel, show note access. Um, you get access to uncut VODs uh, three days early. You can basically say, hey, you know those other streaming days you're doing? Hey, I want to play a game with you guys. We'll, we'll take you up on that. And if, if you're even if you're even financially responsible enough, you can just buy yourself onto the show. If That is that sounds like a your, horrible idea. It is, but you should totally do it anyways. Yeah, uh, yeah and apparently the, the, the French Pedro Mateus... Pedro Mateos, Mateus, E A O U S, 
Potatoes. <laughs> Pedro Potatoes, that's his name. <laughs> Pedro Potatoes. Oh, Pedro good, good, Potatoes. Good old Pedro Potatoes has uh, become our latest our <laughs> latest Patreon, so we got to give some thanks for that. Um, ben, apparently there's a change to some reward tiers coming yeah, up. Yeah, I know. We're going to throw this down, Pedro. Uh, but th- somebody's fucking throwing the axe down, man. I mean, this is legitimately, if the name is to be believed, the real, p- is it Mat- Mateos or Mateos? See, my name doesn't have the O in Mateos, so it can be Mateus only once. I can be Pedro Mateos. Sounds good to no, me. No, no, <laughs> now, now you're Pedro Potatoes. <laughs> and as always, if you want to end up on Frank's fuck wall and throw us something from a wish zone, where we're slightly, not slightly, we're slowly getting down and whittling down the project by Frost. I'm still waiting on something, an encoder. From the slow boat from Singapore, which I said in the pre-pre super shows, and that's another thing you get, is uh, I'm not looking, I'm not tracking that because I'll go fucking insane. But here's the news. Got an idea real quick is right. we parked uh, our Linux game cast a long time ago. Now that we ever plan on doing anything with it, but yeah, hey, that's step one. As soon as you got an idea, just go ahead and get all your social media stuff in case you ever need to get around to it. So later this week, I'll put it up on Patreon. I'll send out the message. To all of our death notes, anybody who is at the 250 level and above, uh, we're going to open that up for weekly daily Wednesdays, that mm-hmm. tech show we like to do, and uh, with Jill, and for Linux Gamecast Weekly. So everybody in that was just a gang of people. That subreddit's going to be open because it's getting kind of unwieldy with our Google Docs right now because that's all manually done by old men, me, and I'm not very clever, but... Hopefully that was simple. We're going to try it out. We're going to see how it works. If you guys like it, we're going to keep rocking. And if not, uh, we'll, we'll tell it to die in a fire. Brilliant. <laughs> All right. So, so then, how is running a PHP 5 app in PHP 7? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was um, something we kind of ran across. Uh, look at that. That that looks like something that wasn't made in two thousand and eight. That that's possibly like two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, two thousand nine, even. <laughs> hey man, if you want to be generous, uh, yeah, uh, WebZone. It's all updated and stuff. Pedro, I got to ask you a question. Trust me, this is going to be related, kids. Uh, that Chromebook is it convertible? Yes, yes, it is. Damn it! Mm-hmm. I, I thought you were going to actually give me shit for having an unconvertible that you held sideways, but. <laughs> It doesn't do the portrait mode if you have it in laptop mode. Only when you flip the screen past 180 degrees does it switch. It's like, oh, you're in portrait now. <laughs> hey, look, there's everybody. There's Joe. There's empty. Ah! Yes. It is terrifying. <laughs> it is, but it's new. It's hot. It's shiny. And uh, it's probably going to catch on a big fiery mess. But what's going on with that? Uh, yeah, it's uh, PHP 7 is mobile responsive. You can use it on your mobile device without it going all jankified, unless you're using a Chromebook sideways wrong. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a problem. I ripped out a <laughs> gang of old plugins. We've got security backup, uh, new caching system, RSS feeds for your podcast and stuff like that. They are now all conformant and shit, so you don't get that nightmare fuel. And last but not least, thanks to uh, the support from my patrons and people kicking a strange, no more Google ads, motherfucker. Ad free, 100%. Boom. Yay! But does it does, does do our RSS feed still work on Selfish OS? We'll find out, like I said, Monday. <laughs> uh, and in closing, I'm not touching that until again until 2027, which I'll probably be dead by then. So you two look forward to it. Um <laughs> No, so now no, goal number one is keep empty alive for the next couple mm-hmm. of years. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't take any more unexpected spills. So uh, the, the Linux community and the Windows <laughs> community lost their collective shit, Pedro. Yeah, it's like almost everyone on the interwebs, especially on Reddit, lost their uh, proverbial shit. So Linus Tech Tips uh, put out a bit of a video, and it's called Gaming on Linux with Wendell from Level 1 Techs. And it's, yeah, it's basically uh, Linus and Wendell going through uh, what it takes to play Windows games on Linux. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, The first thing they do is they go through, it's like, oh yeah, the drivers, you do this, you do that. And then you wait, immediately wait. go to Lutris. What? They, they got that yeah. spaghetti code application. What, why are they doing that, Pedro? Do they hate Linux gaming? 
Well, it's uh, it's more about trying to... Honestly, you can speculate about what they're trying to do. What they're trying, actually trying to do is uh, drive clicks. And kudos, Linus, you did it. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's... I guess the fundamental thing is, if you're a Windows player, you have a lot, and uh, Wendell actually brings this up <laughs> in the video. That's a good way to put it, Pedro, unintentionally. <laughs> you don't use Windows, you play it. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you've been using Windows, you have a lot of games that are Windows only, and chances are you're going to want to play them if you do move the, uh, if you do make that move to Linux. Uh, Wendell uh, says that the best way to do that uh, to get the most compatibility would be to run a VM and just do the uh, GPU pass-through. But if you don't want to do that, Lutris is an option, and kudos to Strider. Seriously, big kudos, Strider. Uh, I want to be in your friend's shoes even less now, because I wouldn't want to deal with that kind of uh, sudden also, attention. <laughs> also, aren't they high heels? Isn't, 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 is a high heel a French <laughs> shoe? I, I want to say yes. Ah. Yeah. And and any anyways, yeah. The the, the con for for the the content of the video itself, it's kind of meh. You got Wendell going on about a bunch of stuff that lay people will just straight up not understand. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real factual holes that I can poke in what he's saying, um, other than he tried to do the GNU plus Linux meme wah, to like wah. Wah, wah, to Linus is like just deadpan like what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, though I, I will say given, given some of the stuff they talk about in that video, I 100% advocate copying things that require pseudo off the internet and just pasting them directly into your terminal. 100% <laughs> do that. LGC cares. Don't, don't read it. Just, just copy paste. Do drop, it drop blindly, it man. Uh, I saw this and I didn't get upset, but, uh, I did, I gotta say this though, because I, I'm gonna get some shit and this did I didn't lose sleep over it. It's like, okay, Deus Ex, we're going to do that. All right. But we're going to play the Windows version. Hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. That happened. I'm just saying it happened, man. Uh, here's the thing. I, I was talking like on the Wednesday after show on LWW. Why does this smart? You don't get 6 million. You don't retain 6 million subscribers if you don't know what the hell you're doing. And that this, this was 100%. This was a beautifully crafted video because... You have like the hardcore Linux users, uh, or just hardcore, just regular Linux users, people who use Linux day in and day out, us, um, get a little bit upset because they're like, really? We're, we're, we're going to do wine gaming on Linux? Mm -hmm. Okay. Rrr, hashtag re. But you also get the Windows users going, oh, look at that. That's a command line. And it angered, angers and confuses me. Re. So you got both of those watching and sharing the video. And I was like, ah, oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Then um, level one is like, oh, let's do a four part series on Linux gaming native. And I was like, ah, there's the other shoe. Now you can write the coattails <laughs> yeah. of that traffic. That was a well executed, well done. Um, Marketing blitz. Yeah, that that's really a good way to put it. But good on you. You see him. Um, Shep, he's the Strider of the pig. That is the creator. Striber. Striber mm -hmm. of Lutris. And he's ours. And he's really not bad he's so cute. yeah Look at him. Just squeeze his cheeks. <laughs> you do enough, enough drugs he, he's pretty tolerable man um mm. change the locks yes oh man uh so here's here's the thing impressive um one, I, one of those uh, 4x games where before steam came that's basically all you had uh they got 2.6.0 coming out or is out um and they got a big ass change log uh, lots of it I, I I will say. Speaking of mobile optimized sites, I'm going this to, guy I'm not gonna, so not so mobile optimized. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get through this scrolling this change log before you get done. Go. Anyways, <laughs> lot, lots of lots of game rules uh, changes for those people who care about that stuff. Um, they got a shiny new QT5 uh, UI for the multiplayer stuff. Uh, they're slowly but surely moving away from SDL 1.2 and moving fully to SDL 2. They've just finished the mixer bits. Um, the the vast majority of this change log though is gameplay related stuff and because i'm not a free civ player i have no idea what any of this actually means 
Um, but it's available for your perusal. You can also play it in your browser. This was a thing that occurred in FreeCiv 2.5.0. They're fully uh, WebGL native. So that is 100% a thing. You should check this out because it's a long-standing open-source game that has filled many, many a lonely nerd's nights while they're waiting for Steam to finally show its sweet, sexy, nipply butt. I win, on, uh, bitch. I got to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, too, can unlock a scroll wheel and let it ride. No, but, you I, know, I didn't cheat, man. I scrolled. So fuck off. No, you still, you still cheated. You fucking yeah. cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. You're, you're, you're almost as bad as Mr. Fox Dog. Uh-huh. That's brilliant. It's free so, man. This has been around forever. Yeah. I've been playing this way back when and going, man, I don't like Civ, apparently. If this is anything, then later on in life when Civ came to Linux, I tried that. And I was like, yeah, I... I don't like Civ. Plus, you know, it didn't have like the uh, option to print out an envelope with a stamp on it so you could mail your next move. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, it still surprised me that like modern Civ games actually have the, yeah, you can hook this up to a mail server if, you, if you're one of those types. All right. I mean, that was a thing that was established back in the day, and that's how a lot of old, hardcore uh, Civ fans still play the game. Just like, oh, they made a move. My turn. Neat. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Civ's one of those games where you either hit the wrong button on the switcher or you go back to the correct thing. I mean, it's one of those games that you dig or you don't. I tried to get it, and I, it, it kicked my ass. It's like, you don't get me. And I was like, okay, and, and 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 then you get those guys like, ah, oh, we've been playing the same Civ 2 game for like a decade. Right. Then it fucks with you. I was like, hey, man, I, I'm that same game, but in space. Do you think you want some of this now? And I'm like, I, I don't know, man. You, you fucked me over less. It's like, come on, try it. It's like, ah, I fucked you. Um, good on them. Good on them. That's a great project. Uh, Pedro has like one of those eight Beto or whatever fucking controls. There it is. See, I summoned it. Uh, he shows it off almost every single episode. And almost. Yeah, I mean, he can be talking about, you know, I don't know, the new Steam client. or No, no, no. Let's do better than that. During our Patreon segment, he was like, yeah, and by the way. Um, <laughs> well, I, I like the this uh, TD Tiny 8-bit to controller, but this one isn't about a controller specifically. It's about a bunch of custom PCBs that you can buy for about 20 bucks a pop, and you can use it to convert your old controllers into something that is wireless, and you can just play your games with it. It's... Uh, it's an interesting thing, I'll be honest. I was kind of curious, like, oh, you have uh, you have different PCBs for different controllers. Do you have one for the Saturn? No, 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 no. You get one for the Sega Genesis uh, Mega Drive if you were over here in Europe. Uh, but uh, no, no Saturn one. So that was disappointing because I would very much like to be able to use my Saturn controller without having to have that massively thick cable just uh, going all over my desk. Listen, man, these things are nineteen ninety nine. I was kind of just shocked by that. I was like, huh, that's pretty the damn cheap. Right. Yeah. The, 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 the other neat thing is that they're actually compatible with the OG consoles as well. And considering yeah. that those old consoles, they were expecting you to be a small child sitting in, crouched in front of your television like a freaking hunchback, um, having the ability to hook it up to a larger TV and maybe sit back on a couch. Is hey, man, a nice you don't remember the... Uh, well, you're too young. Uh, I had wireless controllers, uh, especially for my uh, Master System Mega Drive, was, but they were IR, so you could fuck with the other player by waving your hand in front of their shit. Or, or, or just walking in front of the console. Also, yes. And, and more importantly, you could still control it by... This explains a lot about Old Man Vin, uh, by aiming the IR thing into your eye, so it would... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you could also uh the first few versions of the ps2 also had an ir receiver and if you had a psp with custom firmware you could use the ir emitter on the psp to use it as a uh, wireless controller for the ps2 mm. they yeah. all <laughs> yeah well completely unrelated but also infrared facts they also had an infrared port on the original game boy color that three <laughs> games used for transferring tiny yeah. bits of information that's good but times that, uh i do want to yeah. say the, the only thing i'm the steam controller was the first wireless controller i've ever bothered with uh i dig it but a strider picked it up as a gift so a i'd take care of it and but 
also it's stupid expensive. So I've never thrown it. And that was one good thing about Genesis or Nintendo is like when you launched the controller, it had a handy little return cable. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, mm. Mm. yeah, no, controllers nowadays don't have that anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> Or they get I mean, breakaway I mean, USB I mean, cables. Just, just for the Steam controller price, it's like only fifty bucks. It's not that expensive compared to like the Dual Shocks, seventy bucks. Uh, okay, what I would be willing to pay for a fucking controller? Yeah, it's expensive. All right, <laughs> but it's this about three fifty. But this this one this one's about seven ninety nine. This is well, uh, the uh, Open Pandora, the Pyra, whatever you want to call it, um, they have the fi- the almost final re- revision of the PCBs available. Um, so apparently there are still some Wi-Fi issues they need to resolve. Um, they're getting the four gig boards in, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, they, uh, like I said, they have to do some final testing with the Wi-Fi. They got to get FCC or uh, what's what's the European equivalent of this? Bribe. Um, yeah, what, 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 whatever that is, they get they get get certified for that, and then for the most part, they are good to go. You, if you are one of the people who uh, paid eight hundred bucks for one of these pyros, you can uh, finally run Linux in the palm of your hand. That's not Android. Uh, I I just want to say, take notes, Mach Zero team. Th- uh, behold, something you can hold in your hands. <laughs> Sorry, I was just calling out Mir on something he was saying in chat. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a Pyra. It's still going to be bloody expensive, no matter what they do. And I like, I like what they're doing. I do, but unless they are willing to send me one for me to play around with, I, it's it's way too much money. Oh, the, the 100% the people who are buying this are the people who are like, this is the thing that I want. I want right. this piece of hardware, and I'm willing to pay for it. This is bespoke boutique dipshit, man. You don't, I mean, because, yeah, you can build a pie boy or something like that for like 40 quid and just be yeah. done with it. And But, I mean, this this is a legitimate PC that has game controller shit wrapped around yeah. it. Yeah. It's an ARM PC with a game controller built in. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, drugs it has. I mean, the original, what was the Pyro 1? The, the open Pandora or whatever what, they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the Pandora. That thing finally shipped. And I mean, whew, that was a chunky little brick. But, I mean, they have a history. Unlike Smash Z or Atari, the company that bought the name Atari, uh, yeah. uh, they've actually shipped product. So, mm-hmm. if this is your thing, look, they got the hardware. Maybe uh, consider it if you want i don't know if you want a uh, fuck around device an arm fuck around device that has a full keyboard don't even bother we're not using that as a show title <laughs> it's, Hell, um, I, I mean there, there's there's a thing right like physical keyboard that that's a fairly big ask these days for a lot yeah. of like mobile hardware um and i think you got blackberries as an option they still make like the really huge chunky ones or the, the Android equivalent of them anyways. But uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Good times. Uh, good to see. So what do we got coming up next? Coming up next, we play... I don't want to call it a Zelda clone. because Even that, though they desperately want you to call it that. Zelda was good. I, I, I mean, I mean here, here's the thing. The OG Legend of Zelda was janky, but like there was a game there. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the chair acquisition side. You got to be careful when you're handling stuff like DMSO because it makes your skin super porous and you might uh, absorb something through your skin and then you'd be sorry. And then you'd be what we call Osmaro. I, I, I don't know where I was going with that. It's from Night Apparatus. just made on Game Maker Studio. You can pick it up for about $5 Canadian. Uh, what is it? You're an, it's an adventure set on the planet Osmaro where, ogre, where the Ogre Clan has run rampant. Your mission is to help restore peace and order to the world as you liberate, quote unquote, Osmaro from the Ogre Oppression used highly skilled melee and ranged combat <laughs> along with swift and precise movements to quell the Ogre threat. Dev did send us some keys for this. We, we were just so talking for- about fanfic before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So this is this is your QA edition. This is where we take a game and we, uh, we, we rip it apart and tear it a new butthole and such. We talk, we talk about uh, does it work, does it, uh, the performance, the graphical fidelity and the controls, 
we give it a score on one to four chairs based on that criteria, and then we give it a more loosey goosey, arbitrary score based on the fun we had playing this game. So, I mean, let, let, let's let's not uh, dilly dally anymore. Then let's run this down. Eighteen oh four dot one, I guess, because I get dot one. I don't know. That just comes out. Whatever. It's point release. Uh, Ryzen seventeen hundred. Nvidia nine eighty. Everything you need to run this. Uh, does it launch? Yes, it launches. Good. You get one share for that. How does it run at 1080? Motherfucker, it better. Uh, it does. <laughs> 100% on that. Uh, graphics, you're looking at them. If you're listening to them, it's, it's like a t- an attempt at hipster pixel bullshit. That's the thing. Uh, no windowed mode. Pedro's going to agree with me on that. That's some bullshit. I don't like that. And this is a problem. It's not the fact that it has two cursors. It's that one of them lags behind the other, adding insult to fucking injury. So you get a big old nope with those two things. Controls, however, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Steam Controller, out of morbid curiosity, after some other shit I'll get into later, I reached over, tapped it. It fucking worked. Fuck me on that. So, yeah, three out of four chairs, which is probably the nicest thing I'll have to say about this game. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 28, uh, 64-bit with the i7-6700K, GTX 1080 Ti, Yes, it does in fact launch and will get 60 frames a second, though I would be quite shocked if it doesn't because VSync is locked on ever. Uh, graphical options, there is none. You can set it to uh, one of two resolution settings. Yeah, there's there's no windowed mode and yeah, so, so many cursors, man, <laughs> everywhere. Open up, go to the bathroom, there's a cursor. You open up the fridge, make a sandwich, cursor. It's just too many cursors, man. And um, it kind of has correct DualShock prompts insofar as they'll say, like, press A or cross to do a thing. But it doesn't actually give you the picture of the button, so you have to read it, and that doesn't necessarily work particularly well. But, you know, the, the controls do, in fact, work. Do, do they work for the game? Well, we'll talk about that in the fun segment. But three out of four chairs for Fedoras. What about Solace? Yeah, so over here on Solace 3.9999999. Now, come on. Wait, did, does Solace have, like, different versions? Uh, no, it's just, <laughs> it's just a rolling release lines. distro. Yeah, uh, Ike is just so pissed off at people asking, when is uh, 4.0 going to come out? He just keeps tacking nines to the end. Uh, so, no, over here... This. <laughs> it uh, it launches just fine. The performance, yeah, it's v synced to whatever your uh, monitor's refresh rate is. So what and happens if you have 144 hertz? I'm guessing it'll run at 144 explodes. FPS. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the graphics, there's, like Vet already mentioned, there's no way to enable windowed mode unless you're running KDE, but that's a third-party thing, so the game doesn't get any bonus points for that. Uh, the uh, usual game maker shortcuts for like toggling between full screen and windowed mode, like F4 or Alt Enter, don't work. What about Alt so, F4? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that one works, that but that work. just kills yeah. it. Uh, and yes, there's always two screens, uh, two cursors on screen the whole time. Uh, it's you get the OS one and then the game one, which is huge and it's laggy. So that's just stupid uh, now uh apparently it works with dual shocks and um the steamy controllers on other distros but it didn't work with either the uh 8-bit do or the um steam controller over here in solace and just to be sure just for the sanity check i tested a bunch of other games and it, it they work with those still so it wasn't an update that broke things it's just this game doesn't like solace apparently so for me it gets two out of four so much for mm. Linux Steam integration. All right. How about fun, Ven? Did you enjoy yourself in Osmoro? Oh, fuck no. Um, <laughs> it, it's 45 minutes of you have died, and it felt like several, several hours. Initially, it was like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Then taking one for the team, coming in at like 30 minutes. I'm like, it's just, oh, I'm getting murderated to death. You're looking at it right there. Basically, you have two things. You, you can boop with your sword or you can swing mm-hmm. with your sword. Fuck all. I mean, hair trigger on the controller to switch between the two. I don't think it's a horribly done game. It's clearly not lazily done, but it's definitely hindered by the tools the developer chose to make the game in. So, you know, if I was playing this in a web browser, I'd be like, you know what? Eh, all right. That's kind of fun. Like on Newgrounds in 2002. 
I, I'd have a lot of polite things to say for it. Four ninety nine. It's got some things. I mean, it's got letterboards and stuff like that. Achievements, kind of impressive, but it needs some work. And you look at the forums. A lot of people, a lot. I think there's like five posts for it. Uh, and I know somebody messaged me. That's why I kind of wanted to throw this in, get it out of the way, on Steam, saying, "Can you make this thing work?" I launched mm-hmm. it. And I was like, "Yeah, it launches." I don't know what they were running, but it doesn't work for them. But yeah, that two cursors thing. That's stupid. That needs to be fixed. No windowed mode. And uh, story-wise, I, I can't really tell you anything because just the basic combat and stuff like that, it's like, th- this sucks. I'm, I'm trying to ro- run away from en- enemies. I'm trying to kill them. And all I'm doing is just seeing the screen. You have died. You have died. Live, die, repeat. Uh, yeah. Fuck this noise. One chair. No, I'm going to ding it another chair just because Ven reminded me of a crappy Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now I have tech cancers. Now, the, the fighting in this game sucks. Let's let's be real. Yeah, um, you 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 have the little stabby thing, and if you hit the uh, the D pad and the 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 attack button, you can do a big swipe, and then if you dash, you can do like a powerful swipe that will sometimes stun an enemy, but sometimes not. It's very inconsistent as to when it does that, and. Yeah, that that that's sort of your fighting mechanisms. You can you can pick up other items, and sometimes you can get better weapons that do a little more damage. But the core combat mechanic, which is what the game is focused on, mind you, is terrible. Yeah. Um, it it's real. It's just really easy to get murdered. Um, it's hard to tell when you're getting hit. It's hard to tell when you're hitting something, and then sometimes the the other the other thing too is enemies with range attacks can shoot diagonally. You cannot. Mm-hmm. Which is a little unfair, um, just because fuck. Like there was one room with like a little dragon dude, and it took me like ten minutes to beat it as I tried to find the magical combination of buttons that would finally enable me to kill it and have some amount of health remaining. Yeah, and there, there's even like a little annoying ship battle segment. There's like a traveling thing where you can go to other islands, and it's just not fun. And that's. And that's basically all I can really say about this game. Like, yeah, there, there's lots of people you can go and talk to. Like, someone pl- clearly put some effort into, like, trying to make this quote-unquote immersive. And they failed. Um, I don't really care about the plot. It's all just like, oh, well, you should go check out this thing north. That's I d- That will give you more quests. And you pick up more quests. And sometimes you complete them and sometimes you don't. And I just find myself not really caring. And yeah, making making it to that 45 minute mark is rough, rough, mm-hmm. rough, rough. Um, I cannot in good conscience recommend this game when you can just, you know, find a copy of Legend of Zelda at your local blockbuster and rent a Nintendo Entertainment System and play this that. You'll true. actually have some fun because it's still hey, a solid game. Strader brings yep. up a good point. Anodyne and also, uh, what was it? Hyperlight Drifter. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, which was also a game maker studio game. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, and, yeah, so I'm gonna give it one chair for fun. It's not. It's not fun. No. No. Yeah, it's not only not fun. It's infuriatingly not fun. The days are super short, and you have a limited amount of lantern fuel. So going around at night just becomes a squinting exercise. Uh, there's little to no feedback uh, as to what you're hitting or if something is hitting you. The combat in general just feels like you're waving a feather duster at things until they drop or your character drops. The music at some points just screeches so loud in your ears that you have to wonder if your neighbors are going to bash in the door just to make sure you're all right. Uh, There's, I guess there's a game hidden under all this, but I just couldn't muster the stubbornness necessary to find it. So yeah, one chair for me. Mm. All right. Well, that's 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 the score. All right. Um, I, I don't know. We got any final thoughts before we kick on over to the hit mill? Well, I guess the ultimate question we have to ask, and to the developer, you know, Night Apparatus, you worked on it. I mean, there was work done into this. This isn't shovelware by any means. Nope. Um, it's it. It's just not good. Yeah. I mean, this is a good first attempt. It's four ninety nine, so it has that going for it. Question mark. I, I guess. 
All it's right. not as bad as it was on release when it was like fifteen dollars. Okay, so I wasn't smoking crack. I think I checked it last week and it was fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, it was. Ouch! <laughs> Ow, I feel right. bad for someone who paid the iron price for that. Here's the thing: I thought I wasn't paying attention. Okay, then fuck that, because uh, that was one of the points. I was like, really, you want fifteen bucks for this? That's mm-hmm. fucking insane. At four ninety nine, uh, considering I think the developers kind of like peace out. You're stuck with what you get. And yeah, he's like, he's done. Just If you do do something else uh, there, uh, person, do it better. Mr. Miss, miss, Mr. Apparatus. <laughs> not, not again. Absolutely not shitting on this because somebody had a vision. They had a story to tell. It just didn't translate very well into yeah. this game. No, no. All right. Coming up next, Orn send us some hate mail. Prepare yourself. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the end of the show. Yes, Yay. it's about time we wrap this up. And if you'd like to screech in our direction, say disparaging remarks about our mother, you can go to the new and improved LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out. Well, it's basically the same form, but it looks new. It looks shiny. And it has an actual captcha, not just some random maths stuff uh so unless you get the uh google ai training bit that's always fun uh (laughs) let us know what you thought or if you're a game developer send us three keys or a build that we can share amongst all of us so uh yeah this week we didn't have um much in the way of hate mail so we had to resort to our favorite bangladeshi hey Oh, yeah, yeah, because this, this, this is the one time I am not decent hate mail, so I'm going to read this one. He says, Yodan, how hairy are your nipples? How hairy are Pedro's nipples? Does Ben even have nipples? When I grow up, I want to be Jordan's left n- nipple. Teach me <laughs> how to become nipple. one. <laughs> Patreon goal, Nori slices off Pedro's nipples. How dark are Pedro's nipples? Satana cactus, Pedro. Love, Orn. I agree. I think we should have a Patreon goal where Nori... Cuts off Pedro's nipples. Well, I Mac think we don't need I think nipples. Everyone needs that's, that's, nipples. That's, that's, that's what you think. <laughs> Listen, that's where the angels grab you when you die. Take you away. <laughs> Take care where of your nipples, nipples, kids. <laughs> where, where else are you supposed to connect the electrodes to, Pedro? I don't your know. Your knees? I, I, don't, I don't see anything else other than the nipples. Learn, learn how biology works. You I can just nubbins. imagine like... They can connect it to the nubbins in my, in my right hand. <laughs> Listen, when I'm reading this, I just imagine Orn sitting like on a very picturesque hillside under a tree, writing in his like a uh, poem notebook, and it's got some <laughs> nice music behind it. Yeah, what, what, what was was what, what was what was that poet E.E. E. Cummings? It's just, it's, their their poetry is like a bunch of random gibberish. We get we get we get our own version of that. Yeah, it's E.E. E. Dockings. Hey man, isn't Orn um, like getting the hell out of hell? He I should really have. hope he does soon, and then maybe he'll yeah. actually learn how to ask people about nipples. <laughs> Previously on Linux nipples. <laughs> he'll just walk up to people and lift their shirts. <laughs> Where is Orn moving to? Because I, I need to convince him that's a custom. I think it's the UK now, isn't it? I don't know. Oh. It was Canada for a while. I don't know. <laughs> Nerd yeah. Fight. Nerd. Wait. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. Orin, send us some hate mail next week telling us where you are, your location, your social insurance number, and mother's maiden name. Sounds like a plan because, you know what? On that bombshell, we're going to cue the music. That's right. Look at that. I almost did it right. That's one last thing I got to do <laughs> in post. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm Vin Stone at Vin Stone Twitters. Uh, we got an about page with pop-up shit. It doesn't include our LinkedIn profiles yet, because that's terrifying. Uh, you can get a hold of me on the internet. I will reply, or just ping me in our Discord, because I'm usually paying attention and or creeping in that business. I'm Jordan Swung. You can find out all about my nipples by following me on the social medias at the Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus, and you'll find out whether or not I'm capable of lactation. And I am Peter Matheus. You can find me wondering where the hell or when the hell was the last time I saw a cactus at Unaccounted For on Twitter or plus Peter Matheus on Google+. Well, I, I thought you were going to ask when you saw your nipples cactus? Do you even... <laughs> Did you try to eat it? 
I, I mean, not not all cactuses are peyote, man. Dinosaur. To be fair, I think that was the last time I went to Portugal because my mom has a bunch of cacti laying about. <laughs> I, I, I got I got options paralysis, man. There's just too many ways I can too many places I can go with that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> There we go. That's a patriot goal. Send Pedro to Mexico. We're going to confuse both cultures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send Pedro to Mexico. See how much of the water he can drink before dying of Revenge. fucking liver failure. Considering the amount of limestone I've been drinking lately from the water here, I think I'm fine. <laughs> what, what about all the poop from the, the Thames? <laughs> well, it's the poop from the cab. <laughs> or by crust. Slash trolley rust. Damn it. I just realized that those credits are fucked. Anyway. <laughs> fix it in post. I'll fix it in post. Fucking credits. <sighs> <sighs> At least you didn't do the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday ones this time. Right. <laughs> ah. It's nothing short of amazing to see just how many people are fiscally irresponsible to actually fund this. That's insane. <laughs> it's amazing that I can quite honestly expect to go on a podcast on my Saturday night and fully expect to be uh, interrogated about my nipples. Which, I mean... I mean, you're Canadian. It's, it's uh, just a leap fro they're, they're, frog's they're, leap away from Sunday, right? Listen, listen they're, they're, the nipples themselves aren't hairy. The skin around them is, and I'm pretty sure I don't have breast cancer. You yeah. know, I, I apologize. Technically, all this bullshit's my fault, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. 100%. Five dudes.